Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lercy. Welcome back to the channel. Got a great video for you today. We're going to do another one of our image makeovers where we take just kind of a dull blah image, run it through Luminar AI, make some tweaks, enhancements to it, and see what we can do to add a lot more impact to it and make it into a better image. If you don't have Luminar AI, there's a link down below where you can check it out and follow along uh, with what we're doing with your own image. But it should be interesting. We got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get to it. Let's roll the intro. All right, so here's the image that we're gonna work with. We've got this wonderful old building with lavender out in front, just kind of a plain sky. So it's just got kind of a dull overall appearance to it. It's an interesting subject, but without any direction of light, uh, there's not really a lot of contrast. And so I think it's losing a lot of the drama that it could have. So I think this will be an ideal candidate for our makeover and we'll see what we can do with it. First thing I'm gonna do as always, is make a copy of this, and we'll call this LUM. And so that way we're doing everything on a separate layer so that if we get back and after we look at it a while, we're, we're not crazy about it. It's not difficult to get rid of it or even just lower the opacity. But I think we're off to a good start. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in Luminar AI, and it's going to give us some suggestions over here for templates, and we could almost certainly grab um, one of these templates and probably end up with a huge improvement to this image right off the bat. Just let the computer do all the thinking. But we're going to not use a template for now because we want to go in and kind of get our hands dirty and uh, do some of this stuff ourselves. So when I'm attacking an image like this, the first thing I'm going to try and do is repair first and enhance second. So what I'm going to do is fix things in it before I spend a lot of time tweaking the contrast and things like that because um, I might be changing things that are, are going to be affected by the contrast. So for example, uh, the sky in this case. I like to go ahead and replace the sky early on so that I know what it's going to look like as I'm working on the rest of the image. So let's drop down to sky. Now whenever you're replacing a sky, even though Luminar does a great job. It's very tempting with an image like this to go through and su pick a super dramatic um, something like that, uh, you know, grab some sort of a um, you know, sunset or something. The problem you're going to have is if you pick a sky that is too far off like this, uh, it's way tr too dramatic for what the scene really looked like you're going to lose a lot of uh, believability. So I found that going through and picking some more clouds that kind of look more overcast, like I think this is probably going to be a good match because there's something up here in the sky. There's some texture of clouds, but it's still kind of flat overall. Now we can make it from drab flat to a little more um, contrasty uh, flat, which is what we're going to do. You know, we're not going to be able to add a lot of direction of light but we will be able to bring in some texture to it. And so I think a sky like this is a lot closer to what was really there. Uh, makes for a much more believable um, sky. We can come down to adjustments. I don't know that we need to make a whole lot of adjustments on this other than we could try lightening it or darkening it. Maybe lighten it a tiny bit. You could even add a tiny bit of warmth to it. That's pretty good. I think we're pretty close already. All right, so our sky is in place. Next up, I'm going to go through and remove a couple of things. I've got this gentleman sitting here, which, as lovely as he is, I probably would rather him not be there. There are these, I think, flowers here that could probably go away, and maybe this little sign's a few little things. Not a lot, but we're going to come here to Erase. And it's going to be similar to kind of almost like the patch tool or something in Photoshop, where we're just going to kind of go over him. Let's see what this does with the bench. That's going to be interesting. So I want to get rid of him. Go ahead and highlight all these things. Um, I think that's good for now. Let me just go ahead and get rid of this. We hit erase. Perfect there. Perfect there. Um, I might go over this one more time just to see what it's doing. Let's hit erase again. Okay, I think that's better. 
Um, we've got a fragment of the bench here. It's done a great job of taking him out, but we've got this little leg of the bench. So I'm going to see what happens if I just highlight that area, hit erase. Pretty good. Looks like it's all gone. So we've gotten rid of some of those distracting areas and uh, we can go in now and kind of attack the rest of the image. And let's start with Enhance. Enhance is one of these, some of these sliders are just kind of a very generic name, much like a dr Dramatic is another one down here where it's just accent and you, you just kind of move it over and look at what it's doing. It's definitely bringing out some detail. It's kind of lightening things, but really see it here in the building um, from here coming out. It's kind of lightening things up a bit. We can um, bring in some sky enhance as well. Kind of try and keep those in check together. And you can always just turn this off on button here to see what this particular effect is doing. And it looks much better already. You know, you can use this up here, this before after, and you can see we're already making some huge changes. But that's not going to show you what just Enhance is doing. If you just want to see what Enhance is doing, you've got to turn this off and on. So I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, you can come into Structure, add a little bit of Structure and Boost to this. I'm going to be mostly working with Super Contrast today, so I'm not going to mess with this too much because there's a little bit of overlap there. Okay, I think we got some Structure. Detail, uh, bringing out some detail, and I don't know that there's really a lot of areas that need more detail in them, so I'm going to skip details for now. Go to the landscape. Obviously seems like a, a good candidate for that. You know, there's not much haze here, but we could try sliding it. Oh, that actually kind of gives it a nice little bump. A little bit of golden hour. Again, it's not really a sunset type thing, and so if we go all the way, it's going to look crazy. So we're just going to give it a little bit, and that's such the temptation um, with Luminar is to just go, yeah, let me give me all of that and all of that. And it, it's so easy to make it look um, crummy. So we just want to do a bit at a time here. The foliage enhancer, yes, please. Just a little bit, because again, if we come up here, it's going to start looking neon, which we do not want. Okay, let's just see what we're getting right there. I like that. All right, we're already making some great progress. Let's come down here to the um, dramatic we mentioned before. And what this does, you can kind of slide it all the way over to see it's adding some snap to the image, but it's also uh, taking away some saturation. And it's an unusual look. You may love it or you may hate it. Uh, you can go all the way to kind of see an extreme version of it, which is kind of cool looking, but that's not what we're going for on this one. I just want some. And again, let's see, here we were. So we've lost a little bit of saturation, but I like what it's giving us back in um, some of that nice uh, texture we're picking up through here. And of course we can come down here to saturation and bring a little of that back. But I think we had a little bit too before, a little bit too much before, honestly, so I'm not too worried about it. Now, Mystical is an interesting one because it's going to add kind of a dreamy feel to the image. And I don't know that that's going to work for this image, but I always like to just stop by the Mystical shop uh, on an image every once in a while because sometimes it will throw something at the image that I don't really even know what it's doing, but it looks better. And it's kind of softening that area through there, so not really loving the Mystical on this one, so we're going to keep moving. Portrait isn't going to affect us, of course. Okay, so now we're down here to Super Contrast. Now, we could go through first, actually, before we do Super Contrast and do a tiny bit of Dodge and Burn. And I wouldn't mind just darkening down a little bit kind of this really hot spot area through here. Just a little bit. We don't need a ton. That was more than I wanted. Let's drop back. You know what? Let's just undo this one. Let's take that strength down to 25. Let's try again. Here we 
go. I like that better. Let's darken down a little of these parts back here. Touch the tree. Oh, that looks way better on that tree. A little bit through there. Maybe even just a little bit along the bottom. Almost like a little vignette. There we go. Do a tiny bit more right there. Let's see what that's given us. And you can see we've just kind of brought down some of those brighter areas a tiny bit. Perfect. Which brings us back to super contrast. Now, what we're going to do here is just attack a little bit at a time. So, highlights, I'm going to come up to, um, let's put it about 40%, or 40 on the contrast, and then the highlights. Let's try moving it maybe about like that. I think that looks good. Again, you can easily just kind of check your before and after, before. Just kind of giving us a little more texture through there. All right, so shadows. Let's bump that up. One of the things we'll check here is we'll hit the J key. And what this will do is allow us to see when we are starting to block up areas. You can see I'm going to start getting some block up over there if I add too much black. I'm not too worried about that doorway. This is similar to the image that we um, were working on on the last tutorial. Same with the highlights. I'm going to start getting blow out through there, so I'm going to bring it back. So I'm right on the edge of getting, hit J again, get rid of that. Uh, make sure I'm not going over those. All right, now the lovely midtones, which we've got a lot of midtones in here, so we're going to have to really watch what we're doing here. Let's put it around, okay, it's at 41. And try going light, try going dark. And what I do is I'm not even looking at the right here. I'm just kind of sliding it, looking at the image, give it a second to work. Do I like that better? Do I like that better? And you're probably there at home screaming for the lighter or the darker version. Unfortunately, I can't hear you. I'm going to go with the darker. I kind of like how the darker is bringing out all that real texture in the wall right there. Okay, let's look at our before. Really see, man, the super contrast really did a number on this, and it really brought out some of that saturation as well, which is really nice. Now, um, one other thing you can do, and I'm not sure if it's going to work on this image, but what do we got to lose? Is come here under local masking and hit add, and we can add a texture. And what's interesting is to sometimes, let's, let's just go in here and grab a paper texture. That should probably work. Toss a paper on top like that. Now it's going to look weird, but we'll come here into blending mode. And you play with some of these blending modes, like maybe soft light. And it's going to give the whole thing a little bit of just kind of overall texture. Um, I don't know that I like it better. I mean, there's the before. I feel like we're losing a little bit of that contrast we just brought back, but um, I wonder if we just bring this back a tiny bit. Bring that opacity down to, the, I don't know, 15%. So there's just a little bit of that paper texture in there. Let's let it work. Yeah, I'm not crazy about what that's doing, um, especially to the building. And we could mask that out, but I'm just going to undo that texture. And let's just pretend that never happened, because I'm pretty happy with um, what we've, we've done with these other things. The only other thing I might add is um, a little bit of a vignette on here. Um, we can go and choose subject. And then we will just darken just a little bit you you don't want that vignette to show there's the before there's the after could probably do a little bit more make it a little bigger um, anytime you can see the vignette it's too much and uh, we don't want to go that far 
this is just kind of rounding off the bottom just a tiny bit. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. Again, it's very tempting to come through here and hit every single one of these because they all kind of do their own little thing to make it look nicer. Um, one thing I will do sometimes though is at the end, once I've done all these things, I'll come back to enhance and decide if I want to change anything on this just after having made all those other changes. Sometimes you need to lower it a little bit, sometimes add a little more. We're gonna leave it right there around 23. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I think we've brought out a ton more um, contrast in this image. Let's do the before and after. So there was our before image, yuck. There's the after, I mean, huge difference and not a great amount of time. I mean, to me, that is just almost a throwaway image and I, I think that's really nice. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I would probably do here is go ahead and save this template just for grins. Go ahead and hit save. Come over here to my templates. This is kind of an extra step. I don't know why they have this extra step in like this, but it is what it is. We'll come up with a name for this and we'll call it uh, Sky and Contrast or something. I'm terrible at naming these, which makes it hard to go back and find them afterwards. But we're gonna call it Sky and Contrast. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, we go ahead and hit Apply. Then the really important step, is, if you can remember, is to come in here after this Luminar and put sky and contrast so that way i know that that was what i used on it and again we've got this on its own layer so if you sleep on it get up tomorrow morning and you go you know what i went too far uh you can come back and, and tone it down a little bit but uh, right now i'm loving uh just the dramatic pop that it has you know again there's our before there's our after night and day difference and i think this is definitely a successful makeover so there you go. I think that was a pretty successful makeover. I think if we look where that image started and where it ended up, it really is a night and day change to that image, and it really didn't take us that much time. Now, of course, as you did see in the video, you have to be careful with the balance of things, that you don't go too far, because it really is easy with all these tools at your disposal to take something way too far and um, it starts looking bad. So again, make sure you're doing it on its own layer and save that template for later in case you decide that you want to go back and work on it again and make some other changes. You've got a good jumping off point. You're not just starting from scratch. If you don't already have Luminar AI and can't live without it, you can use the discount code Larry Photo, and that'll get you a discount on the purchase. So that certainly helps a little bit. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this makeover. Uh, what did you think of what we did with the image? Leave me a comment down below. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. But that's all I got for this week. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.